Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship on this fourth Sunday after the Epiphany. It is a gift to have you in our midst. So thank you for being here. We worship as we live in remembrance of our baptism. Blessed be God, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you the no secrets are hid. The cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of our Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through the sight of our Lord. Amen. both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the supplications of your people, and in our time grant us your peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Micah. Hear what the Lord says. Rise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Fear ye mountains, the controversy of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people, and he will contend with Israel. O oh, my people, what have I done to you? And what have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt, and redeemed you from the house of slavery, and I sent you before Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember now what King Balak of Moab devised, when Balaam, son of Beer, answered him, and what happened from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the saving facts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself to? Before God, God on high, shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams and tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the, what does the Lord require of you but to do justice? and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the people. Thanks be to God. Don't wait well in your tabernacle. Don't wait well in your tabernacle. 
leads a famous life and does what is right. No evil to his friend. He is not a king and tempt upon his neighbor. In his sight, the wicked is rejected. But he honors those who fear the Lord. He has sworn to do no wrong and does not take back his word. He does not give his money in hope of. Nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does his deeds shall never be overthrown. First Corinthians. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified. A stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. <coughs> God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption, in order that it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the people. Thanks be to God.
But after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For that most of our siblings in the world can't even imagine. Perhaps we can think of the Beatitudes as light that Jesus gives us so that we might start to see with eyes that are new, to be able to see beyond the distracting lights of the world that compete with the vision that have God, have God has for his people. The Beatitudes ask us to shine the light of Christ into nooks and crannies that we often have the luxury of looking past. Our world has little concern for those in dark corners, those in physical or psychological pain, those who work for peace rather than profit, those who show mercy rather than getting even, those who experience systematic racism and injustice. In contrast, Jesus extravagantly blesses those who never seem to receive blessings. The poor, the sorrowful, the meek, the hungry, the vulnerable, the fearful. Christ shows us the great compassion that God has for his people. And we who follow the way of Jesus are called to open our eyes to see people and systems that others don't or perhaps they see and choose to ignore, to affirm the dignity of every human being, to know that we are all beloved of God. Those who live in the shadowy margins of this dazzling world are all around us. The unhoused, people of color, those who are mentally ill, those who work three jobs just trying to make ends meet, refugees, those living on a meager social security check, forced to choose between medicines, heat, food, and rent, members of the LBGTQ community, siblings in Christ, we who are the heart the hand, the body of Christ, are called to be the light of Christ to all God's beloved, to be the light that dispels the darkness from lives of those around us. We are to share the light and love of Christ. Perhaps the Beatitude ben Benediction written by Lutheran pastor Nadia Bowles Weber can help us shine the light on and share Christ's light in this dark world. Bowles Weber says, I imagine Jesus standing among us offering some new Beatitudes. 
Blessed are the agnostics. Blessed are they who doubt. Those who aren't sure, who can still be surprised. Blessed are they who are spiritually impoverished and therefore not so certain about everything that they no longer take in new information. <clears throat> Blessed are those who have nothing to offer. Blessed are the preschoolers who cut in line at communion. <laughs> Blessed are the poor in spirit. You are of heaven and Jesus blesses you. Blessed are they for whom death is not an abstraction. Blessed are they who have buried their loved ones, for whom tears could fill an ocean. Blessed are they who have loved enough to know what loss feels like. Blessed are the mothers of the miscarried. Blessed are they who don't have the luxury of taking things for granted anymore. Blessed are they who can't fall apart because they have to keep it together for everyone else. Blessed are those who still aren't over it yet. Blessed are those who mourn. You are of heaven and Jesus blesses you. Blessed are those who no one else notices. The kids who sit alone at middle school lunch tables. The laundry guys at the hospital. The sex workers and the night shift street sweepers. Blessed are the forgotten. Blessed are the closeted. Blessed are the unemployed, the unimpressive the underrepresented. Blessed are the teens who have to figure out ways to hide the new cuts on their arms. Blessed are the meek. You are of heaven and Jesus blesses you. Blessed are the wrongly accused, the ones who never catch a break, the ones for whom life is hard. For Jesus chose to surround himself with people like that. Blessed are those who, without documentation. Blessed are the ones without lobbyists. Blessed are foster kids and special ed kids and every other kid who just wants to feel safe and loved. Blessed are those who make terrible business decisions for the sake of people. Blessed are the burned out social workers and the overworked teachers and the pro bono case takers. Blessed are the kind hearted football players and the fundraising trophy wives. Blessed are the kids who step between the bullies and the weak. Blessed are they who hear that they are forgiven. Blessed is everyone who has ever forgiven me when I didn't deserve it. Blessed are the merciful, for they totally get it. Bulls Weber goes on, I imagine Jesus standing here blessing us all, because I believe that is our Lord's nature. Because after all, it was Jesus who had all the powers of the universe at his disposal, but did not consider his equality with God something to be exploited. Instead, he came to us in the most vulnerable ways, as a powerless flesh and blood newborn, as if to say, you may hate your bodies, but I am blessing all human flesh. You may admire strength and might, but I am blessing all human weakness. You may seek power, but I am blessing human vulnerability. This Jesus whom we follow cried at the tomb of his friend and turned the other cheek and forgave those who hung him on a cross. 
because he was God's beatitude. God's blessing to the weak in a world that admires only the strong. Siblings in Christ, let us shine the light of Christ into this dark world, making known God's extravagant love for each of us, a beloved child of God. Amen. Together we profess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison, and all those in need, especially Greg and Trish. Joan, Joyce, Lynn, Don and Carol, Roger, Bert and Nancy, 
Kate, Terry, Stephanie, Margaret, Anne, Anne, Judy, Patty and Kathy, Matthew, Joan, Tom and Kathy, Sarah, Sean, Beth, Virginia, Doris, Jim, Judith, Andrew, Robert, Michael. Pray for those in any need or for trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God for a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. God, be with those who are grieving the death of loved ones. Because of meaningless, senseless deaths. Be with this nation as we seek a way toward wholeness and healing. Sustain us in your promises, faithful God, as we watch for you and gather us into the peaceful reign of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you for opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness to each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our own behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us reverently share that peace one with another.
I appeal to you, therefore, siblings, on the basis of God's mercy, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable act of worship.
with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We praise you and bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. Christ. 
breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation the body of christ given for the world you have made in the fullness of time bring us with all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world through christ and with christ and in christ in the unity of the holy spirit to you be honor glory and praise forever and ever Amen. may we be so bold as to pray as our savior taught us our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen
Loving God, you give, you, you give you thanks for restoring us to your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Karen, to whom will you be taking the sacrament today? In the name of this congregation, we send you forth bearing these holy gifts, that joyous may join with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one, because we all share one bread, one cup. Amen. You may be seated for the announcements. Uh, I want to call your, first of all, um, well, no, I'm going to do that in a second. Um, this sheet is out by the usher's table. It has the announcements on the, um, like, the weekly things that keep happening, as well as the calendar of events. And what I want to call your attention to is we are having a potluck um, to kind of celebrate being together and to welcome those who are newer 
Um, so you are strongly encouraged to come to the parish hall, which is out that door around the corner. If you get a beeline for the building, and you're right there. Um, so we encourage you to do that. Next Sunday, there is one worship service at what time? Nine. Nine. Awesome. Thank you for remembering. Um, do, 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 do. And the, the meeting will be here. Um, if you have an announcement, Susan, did you, like, you have to come all the way up. I'm coming. No, like, yeah, mm -hmm. quick. Um, so some of you have participated in some of the various um, events that have happened where we have these glorious cloth napkins. They've been disappearing. So if you happen to have brought one home and um, watched it, please bring it back to the church so it can be used again. Your brief announcement is? Thank you very much, Reverend Janelle. My brief announcement is that, as some of you have noticed, in the back we have the packets for the Party of Parties, P.O.P. Hooray! Yay! Thank you. And uh, for those of you who uh, don't recall the Party of Parties and haven't read your Trinitarian, Party of Parties is our big fundraiser for the outreach. It will be February 21st. It should be marked in ink on your paper calendar. And um, we have rebooted our fundraiser. And I'm so excited to tell you that thanks to the generosity of so many of our fellow parishioners, we have 20 parties, which is nearly the most we've had that close to when we were really in swing. So very excited about that. One correction you will get in the bulletin uh, for party number eight, which is lunch with the fishes, will be on June 17th. Are you not intrigued by what that means? I hope it does. You'll so write that down when you get to our read your announcements. Remember that it's first come, first served, so after you've had a chance to look it over, you decide what parties you'd like to, to come to during the course of the year. You uh, put that, slip that through the uh, slot in the office, and uh, it'll be date stamped, and if you come to the party on the 21st of February, you will find out what parties you may have made it into based on your timing. Uh, I want to just say if you'd like to help us on the 21st, the Trinitarian has a complete list of the things that you can do to help, but see Meg Economy about the desserts, uh, which we need. We need uh, people to help if you Christian shoe with the serving, and uh, Lisa McNeil will be decorating, and if you have just a lot of manly or womanly strength, and you would like to help us uh, move the libations from the undercroft uh, at one o'clock on that day, please show up and we could use your, your help. Uh, there has apparently been quite a bit, quite a few libations stored down there, so it's gonna be a big surprise on the 21st. Whether it's like Amontillado from two centuries ago or vinegar. Uh, but so come to find out, I think that would be awesome. So please fill that out, please plan to come. It's a great fellowship time and the party's for here. Thanks again to everybody who has been helping. And I hope that was fast enough. <laughs> give a warm welcome to all who are um, visiting with us. My hope is that you notice this little sheet thingy in your um, pew. If you can fill that out, that helps us know who you are so we can be in touch with you. If you are courageous and you want to stand up and say, hi, this is my name and this is where I'm from, you're welcome to do that at this moment. blessings. So if it is your birthday, I invite you to come forward to receive that blessing. Or if you are traveling or have an anniversary and want to receive a blessing. And all of those folks up front, birthday or traveling? Birthday. Okay. So
So Karen is first thing. All right, so we, after picks, we are adding Maureen. Let us pray. Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants, Karen, Paige, Picks, and Marie, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace, and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You're welcome. Happy birthday to you both. Gracious God, we ask you to bless the food that has been brought, the fellowship we will have, and the people who have prepared the space for us. We trust in you that folks will stay and linger in conversation and then help clean up. Because many hands make light the work. We praise you for the farmers who grew the food, for those who transport it, for those who prepared it. May we each be strengthened in mind, body, and spirit to live out your gospel each day. Amen. Amen. I invite you to rise in body and spirit to receive the blessing. Beloved, let us go with hearts full of courage, that we might practice love that disrupts evil. Let us go with minds open to experiencing God in ways strange and unexpected, in ways ordinary and everyday. And let us go with joy, for the creator of all life goes with us. May the Holy One, creator, redeemer, and sanctifier, bless you and all those you love. Amen. Amen.